Hi everyone, welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to be talking about ignition timing, which is kind of a lengthy subject, so I'm planning on breaking this into two videos. The first video here, I'm going to go over what exactly is meant by ignition timing and uh, some of the terminology that we're going to need to know. And then in the second video, I'm going to show you some of the mechanisms that used to be employed in uh, automotive ignition systems for controlling ignition timing. Uh, before we get started, one, I'll apologize for wearing the hat. My hair is out of control today. Um, and also, if you listen carefully, you might hear my dog growling in the background. He's uh, been banished to the garage with me today. Uh, he went in the swamp, and now he stinks like a wet dog. So he's hanging out here with me. So he scouts over by the, by the stairs on the other side of this table. All right, so when we're referring to ignition timing uh, in the engine, what we're actually referring to is where is this piston in the cylinder when the ignition event occurs, when the spark actually happens. And since we kind of can't be in the cylinder while the engine's operating, but we can look at certain things on the outside of the engine, we're going to refer to piston position by degrees of crankshaft rotation, by actually where is the crankshaft in its revolution. So as you know, the crankshaft is connected to the piston via a connecting rod. We're going to use some small engine parts today for uh, demonstration. So here's our connecting rod. Here's my, my crankshaft. Uh, here's my... Here's the piston that used to be on here. We can kind of estimate where that piston, well, not even estimate, we can, we can know exactly where that piston is in the cylinder based on where the crankshaft is in its revolution. So we'll come back to this in just a minute. Okay. So one other thing to note, when we're talking about ignition timing, that's not to be confused with camshaft timing or mechanical timing in an engine. Okay, here's my little small engine camshaft. Try to get this in the frame. If you look, there are a couple of timing marks here. Those have to be aligned when the engine is assembled, right there. Um, and that's not what we're referring to here. This is your camshaft timing. We're referring to ignition timing. So, we know that ignition is supposed to occur somewhere around top dead center. on a compression stroke. So in order for this engine to run, it's going to have to be turned over. The piston is going to have to go down on an intake stroke, suck in air and fuel. The piston is going to come up, compressing that air and fuel. When we get close to the top of the compression stroke, not exactly at the top, so just before top dead center, that's when we want our spark to occur. And I need to explain to you why that is. So first of all, top dead center, or TDC is the abbreviation we need to know. And ignition is usually going to happen several degrees before top dead center. Or what we call BTDC. Okay, so here's why ignition has to happen before top dead center in order for this engine to run properly. When you consider that this piston is squeezing air and fuel up into the top of the, the cylinder and the top of the chamber here in the head, when the piston has already reached top dead center and it's about to start going down again, that's actually when we want pressure on the piston. We want to push that piston down on the power stroke. In order to actually get usable pressure to push this piston back down after TDC, actually I can use a piston right here. So, in order to get usable pressure to push this piston down at the right time, we actually have to start our combustion a little bit sooner than that. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to build up adequate pressure and the engine's going to run with uh, very little power. So, roughly 10 degrees of crankshaft rotation before top dead center is kind of a good starting point. So, Piston's on its way up. Up, 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 up. We're almost at top dead center. Right about now is when I want my spark to occur. At first, when the fuel starts to burn inside the engine, the uh, pressure is very minimal, and not all the fuel burns instantaneously. We like to think of it like an explosion, but it's really not. It's really sort of a, a controlled burn that starts as a little flame around that spark plug, and then slowly kind of spreads out to all the fuel molecules in the combustion chamber. So, while we're waiting for all of those fuel molecules to 
combust. We're going to let the piston finish getting top dead center. We're going to let the crank get up to TDC. And then just as the piston comes past top dead center, now we're actually going to start to develop some useful pressure and we can push this down. So maybe if I slip this crankshaft into its bearing, hold this properly, I can demonstrate. If we make usable pressure too late after top dead center, we only have so much stroke that we can use. So very little stroke here from TDC to VDC, that's it. Okay. So if I start 10 degrees before top dead center, and allow the combustion to build up pressure as we reach top dead center and get just past it. When I'm just past top dead center, that's the optimal time to push down on this connecting rod. So that's why we kind of need a little bit of lead time or what we call timing advance. Basically we need that spark to happen just a little bit before top dead center. And that's going to get our engine started. This timing setting, this initial 10 degrees of crankshaft rotation, this 10 degrees of uh, ignition timing is not going to be adequate for all engine operations, but it is going to be adequate to get the engine to start. So something to keep in mind about fuel. It doesn't burn instantaneously. It takes a few milliseconds to burn. So that's what this 10 degrees gets us. And then it only has a limited amount of time to act on this piston and give us usable power uh, before all of the fuel in that cylinder has been burned and combusted. And uh, it's about 23 degrees after top dead center. That's supposed to be a D, but it looks like an O. After top dead center is basically when we've burnt all of our fuel. that point all of our fuel should be ignited and we're just going to push the crankshaft down the rest of the way and what will actually happen is as you speed the engine up from an idle speed up to higher rpm at higher rpm the piston is moving faster think about it rpm means revolutions per minute so that's going to result in a certain amount of strokes per minute the stroke is a fixed distance but if we're going to spin the crankshaft faster the piston is going to move faster what will actually begin to happen is your piston will basically be further down after top dead center by the time that fuel is all burnt. Rather than 23 degrees after top dead center, it might be 33 degrees or 43 degrees past top dead center. So basically the piston is traveling faster than the fuel is burning. In order to combat that, we advance our timing or basically we take this 10 degrees before top dead center when the spark happens and we push it up to like 20 degrees or 30 degrees, could even be as much as 40 degrees. So that kind of depends a little bit on engine design, on the design of the, the combustion chamber and the shape of the combustion chamber, and also the compression ratio of the engine and even the octane of the fuel you're running. In another lesson in the future, we're going to talk about octane, what that all means. So how much timing advance, how much it changes from this 10 degrees to an advanced setting at higher RPM, that's going to vary. But uh, in order for this engine to run properly, it's going to need to have some kind of timing advance. And we're going to explain how that all works in another video. So, for our terms that we need to know, we need to know TDC or top dead center. That's when our piston is at its highest. We should probably know BDC. Bottom dead center. piston is at its lowest. Degrees before top dead center or after top dead center is what we're concerned with as far as ignition timing. Okay, so about 23 degrees after top dead center we want all our fuel to be burned at a low RPM 10 degrees before top dead center is a good starting point, and this is called our base timing. Okay, base timing is just a, a basic setting 
that is just enough to get an engine to start and probably idle and basically run. So if our ignition system was set up incorrectly, if our distributor was installed improperly, or if there was something wrong with our crankshaft sensor, if our spark didn't happen till like five or 10 degrees after top dead center, you wouldn't even get the car to start it, you wouldn't even run. If your timing was say 20 or 30 degrees before top dead center, you'd have a hard time starting the engine. You might not be able to get it to start. And what you'd actually hear, you'd actually hear the starter motor struggling to spin the engine over because as this piston is coming up on compression, if you have a decent fuel air charge inside that cylinder and your spark goes off 20 degrees before top dead center, it's gonna start building pressure in that cylinder before this piston finishes getting up to top dead center. So it's actually trying to fight the starter motor, spinning the engine over. Uh, on a small engine, if it was over advanced like that, it would rip the starter rope right out of your hand. Uh, if it was a, like a kickstart motorcycle or something like that, it would kick back. The old Harleys were uh, known for sometimes kicking back, and if you uh, did it improperly, it might actually launch you off the bike. So that would be over advanced timing. Okay, so basically base timing, as we said, about 10 degrees, that's just a rough starting point, and then the timing is going to advance from there. We use the word advance. That means the spark occurs sooner, basically with the piston further down the cylinder before top dead center. Spark sooner. And the opposite of advance, which would refer to a spark that happens too late, is called retard. So spark, uh, ignition retard or spark retard. So there are systems that work in the car that I, again, I'm going to show you in another video that advance the timing and retard the timing under different uh, operating conditions. So certain operating conditions we need to retard the timing to keep the engine operating properly and certain conditions like higher RPMs require us to advance the timing or make it spark sooner. All right, so that's all for this video. You should have gotten TDC, BDC, BTDC, and ATDC, uh, base timing, Timing advance and timing retard. Those are the important terms that we should have picked up from this video. All right, until next time.